All right, so hopefully you have conceived everything that we have discussed so far. And now we're going to see how we can start doing the proxying operation. So basically now our Wiremox server is ready with the proxy settings enabled over here. And I'm going to go and copy this particular URL. I'm, maybe, I'm going to change this URL to 9091 because 8080 is going to be very, very familiar port number and many people will use it i'm just going to change it to the mock server url which is the usual 9091 port that we used before as well for the dotnet app so i'm going to just use this one so i'm going to use this port number uh and now guess what based on the diagram that we saw before in our last lecture we have to use this url to be used within our client application so if we just go back to our client application over here within the source code of this particular application, I'm actually calling the localhost 8001 over here. Instead of that, I'm gonna just use the 9091 over here. I know the code looks a bit bad because this is not how the actual application will look like in your actual application side. We'll actually see these particular stuffs in the in the app settings or JSON file. But just for simplicity purpose, I have written this code because this way I can explain things much easier. So now this is what is happening over here. So I'm going to start this particular application over here right now. Uh, and you will notice that this time while I try to access the product page, I'm going to get an exception saying it couldn't able to reach to uh, the connection 9091 because currently my Wiremock server is not up and running, right? So now if I just go back to our Wiremock uh, server, and if I try executing it right now, you will notice that it is going to launch entire thing for me over here. And guess what? You will also notice that ah, before I do that, guess what? I'm just going to go to the file in the folder explorer and I'm going to remove the existing mapping, which I don't really need it at the moment. I'm going to delete them all. Um, cool. And let me run this again. And you'll notice that we are getting quite a lot of logs this time. And all these logs are coming up over here because we have enabled the logging operation within our code, if you remember, which is the uh, console logging of the Wiremock. And also we are writing them up within the console.write line over here with the indented operation, which is good. So now we can go to our application which is the EA app, EA web app. You remember we were getting the exception before. Now if I try to hit the product this time, you will see that it is giving me the product. So how is that really happening? Because there is no 9091 before, right? Now there is a 9091 because we have a proxy server and it is currently listening to us over here. And as you can see, it has did some mapping operation it has do it is doing the saving of mapping to the file over here as the get product dot json file and it's storing all the mappings for us behind the scene which is fabulous right so now i can do the exact same thing i can do an edit operation hit a save i can do a details edit save and you can see that every time i do anything like there it is doing all the different recording for me behind the scene and I'm going to do one more edit, save, edit, save, edit, save, or maybe details, edit, save. There we go. So all of these are recorded right now from behind the scene over here with my proxy. So now if I just stop this whole execution, something like this, you will notice that all these mappings are also being saved behind the scene for me for the get products, get product by ID one, update, get product by ID two, three, and four. So this is something automatically happening for me. And if you want to see the content of this particular file, you can just open VS Code and you can see how it actually looks like. But instead of me doing that, I'm actually gonna use our, you remember the Wiremock inspector that we were discussing before? I'm just gonna use that one. So I'm gonna to go to the path over here and I'm going to uh, start our uh, .NET of Wiremark and I'm gonna read all the static mapping. So you can see that it's reading all the different files for me, pretty much like how we discussed before. 
and I'm going to call the wire mock inspector over here. So once I do that, and if I go to this port number 9091, because you know that the wire mock is currently running in the port number 9091 for us, which is this one. And now if I just go back and if I hit refresh over here, you will notice that there is no request really happened behind the scene for me. But in the mappings, I can see all the mappings coming through. So this is the one very, very handy, which I was showing you in our earlier lectures. So you can see that there is this whole detail and you can read through all the different content of the details behind the scene from in here, right? And also shows what type of request it is. It's a get request and this is a put request uh, and things of that nature. And now what we can do is we can see if we could be able to replay this entire server within my actual application. So I am actually going to use a bit of a trick to do that. I'm just going to go and stop my application right now. Guess what I'm going to do this time? Guess what? I'm not going to run the product API at all this time. I'm just going to run the EA web app. So let me just run the EA web app alone. I'm going to start the server. So there is no middleware or there is no database. So this is just the UI of the application. And if I hit product this time, I'm going to get an exception here. But guess what? There is an exception. It says that no matching mapping found. Right? So, which is fine. There is something happening behind the scene. And this status message that you are seeing over here is quite familiar, right? This is coming from our wiremock.net really. It is doing something behind the scene, but somehow it couldn't be able to match the request for us. And there is a reason why this is happening. And I wanted to show you, maybe you'll encounter the same problem in future. So I'm gonna stop this entire thing. I'm gonna use uh, code dot to open Visual Studio code in this path. And if I go to the mapping directory uh, to the get products, you will notice that there is a trace parent header where it has got a wildcard matcher of this pattern because these things you can match it quite easily in the matcher. So except it's a text uh, slash plane, so it works. Uh, and it is a slash product slash get product. It works as well, but only one matcher is not going to match. And that's the reason why this is actually failing as well. You can also see the same information in here. If I try to refresh this particular uh, server. So, oops, sorry. Uh, let me try to run the wiremock.net. Uh, and because this application is currently up and running, if I try to hit the product, and if I go to the uh, wire mock over here, you'll notice that there is going to be a partial match of one happened for the get products and it has failed. And you will notice that why it has really failed. If you just go to the request, you see that the header is failing for me. And it says that the failing failure is really happening because the actual value was supposed to be this one, but there is an exception happened because there is a different trace parent value coming up. This tool is quite interesting, to be honest. You can see all these kind of things happening there. So all these are working, but just this particular part is failing because this is like a wild number happening there. So in order to fix this particular problem, the easiest way which I have taken is, I'm just gonna say uh, regex matcher, something like that. And I'm gonna say, dot asterisk. So this is going to match the entire logic for me. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the rest of them quickly. And I will show you how we, easy it is uh, to update that. But guess what? While you do this in the real time, you have to actually uh, write the code to ensure that you replace this particular value programmatically, not just like hand coding it because that's not how things are going to work in real time, right? So I'll talk about that while we get to the advanced section of this particular course. But for now, just for simplicity purpose, just to make you understand the proxying functionality, I'm just going to copy paste this like a hand coding it. And now if I go back to my server over here and just try to refresh it because there is no watch or anything built in. And if I run the .NET server, and now if I go back to our 
guy, so there is no request coming in. And if I go to the UI of the application, which is this one, and if I hit product, you will notice that there is no backend running, there is no middleware running, but it is showing me the product coming up. And this is happening because of the wire mock running behind the scene. And you see that there is a request being matched for the get product. This is happening because of this guy, because we did a request. And if I hit edit, you will notice that there is gonna be one more request being matched and it's working as well. And if I hit save, probably that is not gonna work. I don't know for what reason it's not working, but yeah, that's, it just works as well uh, for the rest of the things as you can see over here. They all just work. And if I hit refresh, you see that it works. For some reason, the put operation is not working. So if you just go back, you see that it also looks for a body to be matching and the body is not matching in my case. That's the reason why it's failing. So the update operation only works for mouse, but not for the monitor or anything else like that. So that's the expected and the actual difference which is happening. So hope you got the idea of how you can also create your own mock server with just writing not even a simple line, a single line of code. You don't even have to write all the code that we have been writing all these days, like the one which we have commented out. You can just do a proxy recording and you can generate all the mappings, store them all in a static file, and then you can just use the mock server to point to the static file, and you can point your actual application to the proxy server or the wire mock server, which is this one, and that way all the requests are gonna be redirected to the mock server, and it's gonna respond to you back from the saved mapping file. So if you have already followed along this course from the beginning till this point, you understand what I'm really talking about. And that makes much, much easier sense for you to use wiremock.net as your mocking server, which is gonna make your life much, much easier. So once again, thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and you guys have a great day.